Hello, this video is sponsored by BritBox, the premier streaming service for Britain's most beloved TV shows. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to myths. Specifically, myths that British people like me believed about the United States of America. For those not keeping count, this is part three in the series. As is customary, I'll link to part two at the end of this video, and if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, do that now. Without further ado, here are seven myths that British people believe about the United States of America, part three. This is a sort of weird one. I think the notion that all Americans are super rich, for me, comes from the fact that I was brought up in the 80s and 90s. And a lot of the films that came out of Hollywood at that time seemed to depict American families as super wealthy and, you know, just excessive expenditure. I'm thinking of things like Home Alone, where you have this huge family in this huge house, or, or any sitcom in the 90s that seemed to vaguely be set in New York City, in which people lived in these massive apartments while simultaneously working in a coffee shop. But since then, I've come to find that there's actually varying degrees of wealth throughout the entire country. In fact, there's probably more awareness these days in Britain that the United States has this huge gap between the super rich and the poor, and that for every giant house lived in by the McAllister family, there are homeless encampments in major cities. There are people living paycheck to paycheck, as I did myself for many years. In some ways, it feels like most Americans aren't rich, depending on how you define rich. Here's the thing, right? When I lived in England and you get these kind of news stories coming from America that, you know, some dude rode an alligator through a shopping mall to steal some jewellery for his cousin who he was also married to, that sort of thing helped to build up this kind of stereotype in your head about Americans in general. And in recent years, when that kind of story drops, it usually falls under the category of Florida man, which, you know, might be unfair to Florida, I don't know, might be unfair to men. But I suppose there's a perception that Florida produces a higher ratio of these kinds of stories, probably because they have more alligators. But anyway, rest assured that those kind of stories make it to England because they're so extreme. And because they're so extreme, that means that most Americans aren't like this. In hindsight, I suppose that's pretty obvious, but sometimes you've just got to cut through the perceptions that are created by the news. In a previous video, I talked about the American tendency to applaud at the end of films, but in hindsight, I'm not sure they really do all that often. I feel like I've only seen it happen once, and that was at the end of a Star Wars film, and us Star Wars fans are quite fanatical. Right, I didn't see too many people clap their hands at Phantom Thread. It doesn't mean that they didn't enjoy it, they might even have found it a bit weird. But the fact is, most American cinema goers don't reach the end of the film and go, Oh yeah, yeah, kick ass! They just sort of, you know, take it in, like British cinema goers. In fact, on the whole, I'm not sure there's too much difference in the way that British and American cinema goers behave. Both countries have those people who talk too loud or check their phone or spill popcorn everywhere. That's, that's me, the popcorn person is me. Anyway, speaking of applause-worthy entertainment on your screen, that brings us on to this. Oh, hello. Don't mind me, just watching another episode of Shetland on BritBox. And I know what you're thinking, ooh, Lawrence, this month alone you've got Christmas, the World Cup, your monthly special and an important life event to reveal and you're still binge-watching television. Well, yes, actually, and because Christmas is just around the corner, BritBox is gift-wrapping the opportunity of a lifetime. Basically, anybody that gives the gift of BritBox to a loved one this holiday season will be entered into a sweepstakes with the chance to win an all expenses paid seven day round trip for two to London and the Cotswolds. Better yet, it'll include an exclusive set visit to watch the filming of a BritBox TV show. While on set, the winner will get up close to the action as an understudy to an on-screen dead body. I absolutely love my country. Head to BritBox.com slash one way and follow the on-screen instructions to make your purchase for your chance to win. Once they redeem their code, the recipient can start their BritBox subscription immediately via their smartphone, tablet, desktop, Chromecast, Apple TV or Roku device, as well as LG and Samsung smart TVs. The link is in my description below.
Aha, this is a huge one that British people like me believe, in fact, it's probably just me, that these yellow school buses that you see in films from Superman to Forrest Gump to every other one was just a made-up movie trope like the 555 area code. But not only are these buses very, very real, they are found throughout the entire country, to the extent that I even did a video on how they became standardised. Their mustard yellow colour was specifically chosen because it was determined that this this colour was the most visible to fellow drivers and therefore would result in fewer accidents. American yellow school buses are as real as red London buses. Let me know in the comments below which you think is more iconic. Every now and again, you will hear it said that Americans are arrogant, right? This broad sweeping statement that all Americans are arrogant. And I think the thing is, the full spectrum of personality traits can be found in all countries. It's like saying all Americans are selfless or all Americans are shy. I mean, sure, I've encountered the odd, sometimes very odd, arrogant American. But the same was true, perhaps to an equal extent, in Britain, just with British people, not Americans. Perhaps the perception arises from the fact that arrogant people tend to do or say things that gets people's attention and therefore is packaged up into a neat and tidy clickbait article that helps to once again further propagate this idea that all Americans are the same way. And, you know, the world of entertainment probably does that for this, the perception that all Americans have perfectly white teeth. And I know what you're thinking, ooh, Lawrence, anybody's teeth look perfect next to the British. But, you know, studies have found that we have some of the healthiest teeth, so who's laughing now? Not us, but for your benefit. Now, the truth is that American dentistry does favour a more aesthetically driven approach to teeth maintenance. So, while teeth are developing, most kids will wear braces, and many Americans whiten their teeth with teeth whiteners. But some Americans have bad or wonky teeth, right? I'm not going to name names, but Chainsaw Jim looks like he hasn't been to the dentist in 40 years. It's just that America doesn't have a tendency to slap those people on the front of magazines. And finally, before I moved here, I had this impression that America was all palm trees and beaches, which is weird because I've seen the film The Shining. I think a big part of that, though, is that a lot of films that come out of the United States are in fact filmed in California, which does have a lot of palm trees and beaches. The problem is there's this huge part in the middle of the country that isn't on the coasts, and that middle part tends to be a sort of petri dish for the worst weather you've ever seen. That's why I have to endure about four tornado warnings every year. That's why there's all this snow and low temperatures at this time of year and why you should watch my November special for more information. Basically, America is a rich tapestry of all kind of weather patterns. Not to mention topography. For all of the beaches that you have on its admittedly long coastline, there are places that many humans can't even set foot. Then there are places that most humans could set foot but choose not to because there's nothing for a hundred miles. So the perception that I previously developed that it's all sunshine and beaches probably comes from the fact that I craved sunshine and beaches when I lived in Britain. Despite the fact that it's also a myth that it perpetually rains there. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below some of the myths that you've believed about either country. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I don't have to. And sometimes I find myself dispelling these kind of myths while I'm on my secret live streams with patrons. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.